Welcome to Augsburg College, site of the first national exhibit by faculty artists of Lutheran colleges and universities. I'm Kristen Anderson, instructor of art history in the Augsburg College Art Department. Augsburg College is a private four-year liberal arts college of the Lutheran Church. Located in the city of Minneapolis, Augsburg serves a diverse student population of about 1,800. This history-making exhibit is funded by both Augsburg College and the Lutheran Brotherhood Life Insurance Company. It brings together a broad spectrum of media, including works in oils, acrylics, graphics, photography, sculpture, ceramics, and fiber. The exhibit also includes a wide range of styles and subject matter, as seen in landscapes, figure studies, still life, abstractions, and religious themes. This variety is in keeping with the purposes of the art exhibition program at Augsburg. These purposes include teaching about historical styles and principles of design through examples of the work of living artists. In a moment, I'll take you on a gallery tour, making brief comments on each of the works. Visual arts came relatively late to Lutheran colleges, and the artists who pioneered these programs were often sent to private art schools for training after joining the faculty. This portrait of Professor F. A. Schmidt was painted by Herbjorn Gausta, a Norwegian immigrant who taught at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa in the 1880s. Prominent citizens of Decorah had sent him to Europe for his art training. Although this painting reflects the conservative realism of the time, Traces of Impressionism can be seen in areas of patchwork brushstroke. This is a 19 by 23 inch lithograph by the founder of the art department at Bethany College, Lindsborg, Kansas. Berger Sanzane was a Swedish immigrant nationally known for his paintings and prints of landscapes. Ivan Dosef executed this 26 by 14 inch figure study in Kantekran. Dosef studied at the University of Chicago around the turn of the century and the careful modeling in light and dark reflect this academic tradition. In the 1950s, Joseph taught at Augsburg College and also at Luther College in Decorah. This 23 by 17 inch woodcut, titled Judas, is typical of Cyrus Running's interest in themes from the Old and New Testaments. In 1940, Running founded the art department at Concordia College in Moorhead, Minnesota. The composite merging shapes and patterns suggest a Neo-Byzantine style. Cyrus Running also frequently worked in landscape. This 17 by 36 inch ink and watercolor drawing is titled View of the City. The generalized forms in line and wash are typical of his work. This cherrywood sculpture reflects the artist's belief that all sculpture should convey meaning as well as being visually pleasing. Arnold Flotten created this piece called Portrait of a Sculptor. Flotten founded the art department at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota and received many commissions for church sculptures. A somewhat similar sculpture is Egon Weiner's 12-inch high, The Prodigal. A visiting artist at Augustana College, Rock Island, Illinois, Weiner was trained in the School of Arts and Crafts, Vienna, Austria. He also taught at the School of the Art Institute in Chicago. His work is reminiscent of the style of the German Expressionists. August Mulder painted this 48 by 43-inch acrylic of Cologne Cathedral. Mulder was artist-in-residence at Augsburg College for 20 years. The earth red canvas is textured with pigmented modeling paste, then brushed over with light and dark blues and violets. Mulder's painting achieves a similar effect as the stained glass windows for which he was noted. Our Lutheran colleges have other artists who, though retired from teaching, have been given the honorary title of Professor Emeritus to reflect their stature in the academic community. A Tear for Humanity is the title of this 15-inch bronze sculpture by Ogden Dalrymple. A master of traditional bronze casting, Dalrymple is Professor Emeritus at Augustana College, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Augustana's other founder is Professor Emeritus Palmer Eide. His 15-inch high walnut sculpture is called Homage to Barbara Hepworth. The work exhibits the dish-shaped forms and projecting ridges in the style of Hepworth. Eide has also created large sculptures for church commissions in the Twin Cities. The largest number of works in the Lutheran Faculty Artists Exhibit belong to those who are still teaching and creating art. David Boggs titled this 16 by 15 inch watercolor, Medium Grit Heart. There is a fool the eye imitation of real objects. For example, the sandpaper looks real, but is actually painted. Boggs teaches at Concordia College, Moorhead, Minnesota. 
This is another watercolor showing the great range possible in this medium. Called Volume 1, the 20 by 21 inch work uses a resist such as rubber cement to block out layers, creating an intricate transparent effect. The artist is Roger Kilponen from Concordia College, Ann Arbor, Michigan. The Sun Also Sets is the title of John Nellermo's 26 by 32 inch pastel. John is a graduate of Concordia College, Moorhead, Minnesota. He is now teaching at Texas Lutheran College in Seguin, Texas. An 18 by 24 inch oil pastel and pencil work by William Chandler is called Dark Walk. Chandler teaches at Concordia College, Mequon, Wisconsin. Wynne Bruhl is a new teacher at Concordia College in St. Paul. He used mixed media, including acrylic, ink, and graphite to create this 30 by 24 inch untitled painting. This print carries the enigmatic title, Looking for Faith Among the Icons. Edwin Kalki, a teacher at Carthage College, Kenosha, Wisconsin, used intaglio and screen printing techniques on handmade paper. The symbols around the large figure shape possibly refer to aboriginal or petroglyphic art. This is a 16 by 16 inch oil painting by Jack Osmond, department chairman at Wittenberg University, Springfield, Ohio. The title is Melancholy Baby. Jack Mann, also from Wittenberg, paints in a neo-realist style, similar to the work of David Hockney. This is a 17 by 26 inch watercolor wash on Bristol board titled Interior with Plant. Larkin Maureen Higgins teaches at California Lutheran University, Thousand Oaks, California. Her 11 by 14 inch photo and collage, called Bar Relief Number 12, has a California look, humorously combining two and three dimensions. This subtle abstract painting carries the title, To Laugh, To Cry, Is To Think, To Trust. The low definition surface is brushed with opaque gesso or watercolor. The artist is Jay Olson from Augustana College, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This is called Thora Saba, a 25 by 30 inch acrylic matted in a double window. The artist is Aida Mohaibir Frick from Wartburg College, Waverly, Iowa. The corn borer and stalks suggest an Iowa theme. This 20 by 16 inch woodcut monotype and collage employs a sophisticated print technique mixed with graphic media. It is titled River. The artist is Jean Gumper, a teacher at Concordia College, Moorhead, Minnesota. The silver print is an early photographic technique. This print is also slightly tinted with color. The artist is Heidi Peterson from Wartburg College, Waverly, Iowa. The work is called Landscape Detail Number no. 1, Kiyosakwa, Iowa. This 24 by 54 inch intaglio print is the work of Carl Grupp, a teacher at Augustana College, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The print is composed of three separately titled plates using a broad range of print techniques, including etching and aquatint. There is also a full scale of tones from very dark to very light. The title is Diogenes Dream. Anne Terry is an artist from Wittenberg University, Springfield, Ohio. Her 16 by 20 inch oil pastel and pencil drawing called Temenos has mysterious forms that suggest gravestones or architectural ruins in a landscape. Interstate 25, New Mexico, from the Passenger Series, is a 20 by 24 inch ectocolor photograph. It is a view of the New Mexico landscape as seen from the passenger seat of a moving car. The blurred motion of the car in the foreground contrasts with the stable background. This watercolor is the work of a teacher at Grandview College, Des Moines, Iowa. Jim Engler calls this 15 by 22 inch work, Iowa Landscape. It has the typical horizontal composition of a Midwestern landscape with a river in the foreground and the Iowa capital in the background. Also from Grandview is Dennis Caven, who painted this 16 by 20 inch acrylic. The hanging snow shovel has a tongue in cheek humor similar to the ready-mades of Marcel Duchamp. These are three 14 by 13 inch collages that bring together various media such as paper, fiber, and metal, as well as printed materials. The work is reminiscent of the found objects of Kurt Schwitters. The artist is Orland Rourke of Concordia College, Moorhead, Minnesota. The title is Land Ribbon 1, 2, and 4. Steve Thomas gave this 12 inch high sculpture the title Heart Song. The work combines the heart and harp shapes in highly polished bronze. Thomas teaches at Augustana College in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. 
These flowers are a typical subject of Betty Olson, who has taught at Augsburg College in Minneapolis. Working in a 28 by 36 inch format, she allows each stroke to touch the paper only once, giving the watercolor a spontaneous, fresh quality. This particular work is called Summer Garden. This watercolor and acrylic painting by Arthur Frick contains geometric and semi-abstract shapes that resemble airplanes, bombs, and targets. Frick, who is the chairman of the art department at Wartburg College, uses hard-edged masking techniques with softer airbrushed areas. The title is Flight to Fanar. This pastel on 28 by 36 inch paper is called Bricks and Marbles. Donald Palmgren of Gustavus Adolphus College, St. Peter, Minnesota, has used this simple subject to explore the complex negative spaces created by merging light and shadows. Mac Gimsey is a teacher at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. In this 20-inch high bronze and walnut sculpture, he has created a heroic or religious metaphor for humanity. Gimsey calls this work On Wings of Freedom. This mixed-media sculpture has been given the title Resurrection by artist David Croft. It is a 15 by 15 inch architectural form shaped like a tomb. Brass rays pierce the torn acrylic door, and the structure is placed on a stepped podium that suggests a Greek or Roman temple. Croft teaches at Concordia College in Austin, Texas. Paul Rustin, who formerly taught filmmaking at Augsburg College, took this untitled 15 by 13 inch photograph in 1943. Rustin was an Air Force photographer in North Africa and Italy during World War II. A very different photographic approach is seen in Deborah Danielson's 11 by 14 inch print called Rearranging the Furniture. Danielson has used a platinum photographic technique to capture a carefully arranged fantasy environment that includes Christmas tree lights, a doll, and a horse. Danielson teaches at Roanoke College in Salem, Virginia. This 16 by 20 inch photograph is more in the traditional realist style reminiscent of Walker Evans photos of the 1930s. The photographer is Robbie Steinbach, who teaches at Augustana College, Rock Island, Illinois. This 20 by 24 inch silver point photograph is by Ruth Ann Kovac of Waldorf College, Forest City, Iowa. Here the photographer has focused on soft edge shapes and patterns of light and dark. Meg Ojala of St. Olaf College, Northfield, Minnesota, used a 35 by 45 inch mat with six separate windows to frame this photograph. It appears that the windows contain enlarged details of repeated images with emphasis on texture and motion. Nothing Ventured, Nothing Gained is the title of this humorous bronze and wood sculpture. It appears to be a 13 by 13 inch heart-shaped candy box cast in bronze and filled with dice to create a surrealist juxtaposition of dissimilar objects. Lori Hoffman of Gustavus Adolphus College is the artist. This 16 inch tall ceramic vase has a shape reminiscent of Greek amphora, but the artist applied the glaze in a manner similar to the style of Jackson Pollock, the abstract expressionist painter. Anita Powell calls this piece Fancy Pot. She teaches at Gustavus Adolphus College in St. Peter, Minnesota. Another approach to creating pottery uses clay formed into slabs. In this 23-inch high piece, Robert Rickles from Concordia College in St. Paul has combined wheel and slab building techniques in floor vase, wheel, and slab. Corrugated cardboard and acrylic paint are the media used in this sculpture called Pizza Shrine 3. The artist, Mel Keynes, has created a 26-inch high model of a skyscraper in the postmodern architectural style. Keynes teaches at Bethany College, Lindsborg, Kansas. Tom Torrens, a teacher at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, assembled this sculpture from scrap steel parts. Its title is Table Crescent Bell. The bell seems to have been made from the top part of a compressed gas cylinder. This is another excellent example of ceramic slab construction. Here the slabs are assembled in a manner reminiscent of the cubist style, using intersecting planes covered with transparent layers of glaze. Ron Galla of St. Olaf College calls this 37-inch high piece, Nobody Wants You When You're Old and Gray. Rowan Schusheim Anderson calls this 48 by 52 inch weaving, Visual Pursuit. The artist teaches at Augustana College, Rock Island, Illinois. The composition suggests a landscape or contour map and uses new iridescent fibers along with more muted traditional colors. 
Augustana has a strong program in fiber arts. Paul Granlund, sculptor in residence at Gustavus Adolphus College, created this bronze sculpture called Familia II. This composition, using interlocking or dancing figures, is typical of many commissions Granlund has done in the Twin Cities. The rough surface texture resembles Rodin's work, for he leaves his modeling marks in the finished bronze. This is another bronze sculpture by Paul Granlund, showing a geometric contrast to his figurative style. This 56-inch high work is called Starburst. This 4 by 8 inch copper vessel is the work of Ken Schmidt from Concordia College, Ann Arbor, Michigan. The work, Vessel for New Pask, takes forms usually found in ceramic and executes them in metal. The curving planes resemble the work of the early cubists. Bronze, copper, resin, and wood are brought together in these three sculptures. The artist is Dwayne Mickelson from Concordia College, Moorhead, Minnesota. The three 11-inch high shapes show different stages of a bird emerging from an egg. The polished surfaces contrast with the rougher areas. Jerry Punt is one of the art faculty at Augustana College, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. In this 19-inch high clay jar, he contrasts the crackled surface of the glaze against the rough textured surface of the fired clay. This 48 by 48 inch acrylic painting contrasts taped, hard-edged shapes against looser brushwork. Jack Swanson calls this composition to T-E-A-K. It is based on the interaction of curved and diagonal forms. The artist was a teacher at Golden Valley Lutheran College. Encaustic is a technique that uses hot wax to carry the pigment, a technique that goes as far back as the Egyptians. This encaustic painting by Dorothy Mason is called Madonna. The artist has used gold powders along with the pigment to create a very rich surface. Mason teaches at Susquehanna University, Selins Grove, Pennsylvania. Toshi Yoshida executed this 17 by 22 inch woodcut in the traditional Japanese style. This technique uses watercolor and rice paste as an extender. The final print may be composed of many color plates. Yoshida taught at summer sessions at Augsburg and now runs an art school in Japan. Carla Dickey Prinster gave this ceramic the humorous title, eel Lated. The 10-inch high pot has eel forms showing through the many layers of glaze resist. Prinster teaches at Augustana College, Rock Island, Illinois. Raku is an ancient oriental method of working with clay. Exit and Enter is the title Catherine McDonald Cherson has given this slab-built, 15-inch high ceramic construction. The crackled glazed surface shows figural forms. Cherson is from Augustana College, Rock Island, Illinois. Escape is another piece by Cherson. This is a 16-inch high stoneware pot that also uses crackled glazed surface combined with figural and geometric elements. Clay can sometimes be used to imitate other objects and materials. Jake Jacobson has used this to advantage in this 10-inch high earthenware piece called Teapot No. 1. Jacobson is from Midland Lutheran College, Fremont, Nebraska. Clay can also be rolled out in very thin slabs, as seen in this untitled delicate vase form by Lois Peterson of Pacific Lutheran University, Tacoma, Washington. Rob Roy from Suomi College in Hancock, Michigan, sculpted this nine-inch high wooden piece. Called the huddle, the shapes almost imitate natural driftwood forms. Also from Suomi College, John Brookhouse has created this nine-inch high vessel in a formal pottery style resembling ancient Chinese and Japanese work. Egg temper is a quick-drying method of painting combining acrylic and egg yolk. Phil Thompson, chairman of the Augsburg College Art Department, has used this medium, building up light and dark areas through linear strokes. This 50 by 38 inch painting, called The Cleaning Table, is part of a series based on playing card images and mythological themes. This 36 by 54 inch acrylic painting is the work of Bruce McLean from Gustavus Adolphus College, St. Peter, Minnesota. Titled Three Columns, the painting appears to be based on an industrial landscape. Columns of rising smoke form large curving diagonal movements against strong colors and patterns of light and dark. This 24-inch square acrylic is the work of a former art history professor at Augsburg College, Mary Swanson. The piece is part of a large series of paintings based on the color theories of Joseph Albers. 
Robert Serene of Midland Lutheran College, Fremont, Nebraska, used the rough surface of the paper to render tones and textures in this 33 by 24 inch pencil drawing. The title, Two Gazing Globes, possibly refers to the reflected images on curved surfaces. This woven fiber piece appears to contain some tapestry techniques. This 60 by 90 inch work called Equilibrium was done by Elizabeth Liefer of Suomi College, Hancock, Michigan. John Mosand is a former teacher of graphic design at Augsburg. His 36 inch square acrylic is called Four Boats. As a designer, Mosand shows concern for a decorative division of the space and contrasting warm and cool colors. Michigan Dunes is the title John Sturmfels gave to this 24 by 36 inch tempera painting. Sturmfels is from Concordia College, Ann Arbor, Michigan. This work is typical of upper Midwest landscape, painted in a descriptive yet somewhat abstract style. Sturmfels has also allowed the paint to drip, similar to the action paintings of the abstract expressionists. Reframing Reality is the title of this 30 by 25 inch acrylic painting by Larry Gross. He breaks the rules of conventional painting by punching a hole in the canvas. He has also introduced a foreign object, the key, into the painting, relating the work to the surrealists. Gross teaches at Concordia College, Portland, Oregon. This 22 by 26 inch watercolor attempts the effect of bright light on objects, washing out the image similar to an overexposed photo. Patricia Wacker gave this work the title Country Morning Sunshine. Wacker also teaches at Concordia College in Portland. Lynn Bowman created this 22 by 27 inch monoprint out of mixed media. Bowman, who teaches part-time at Augsburg, calls this piece August Wizard. The monoprint achieves a spontaneous effect by squeezing the ink against the paper. William Bukowski of Bethany College, Mankato, Minnesota, painted this 24 by 50 inch oil. The title is Artifacts and Artwork and the style is in the manner of 17th century Dutch still lives that attain an almost magical realism. A horizontal layering of land merges with a layered sky in this muted landscape. Robert Aldern from Augustana College, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, calls his 36 by 30 inch oil west of Chamberlain. This 90 by 40 inch textile was created by Pompili Burana of Gustavus Adolphus College of St. Peter, Minnesota. Batik is evident where lines laid in with wax resist reveal many stages, giving the work an intricate tapestry-like pattern. Dana White Schaefer gave this 60 by 80 inch weaving the title Iowa Games. A teacher at Grandview College in Des Moines, Schaefer has woven an Iowa landscape with symbols of farming and industry. There is a sophisticated open checkerboard of light and dark squares that hide and reveal the landscape underneath. This gives the tapestry an almost quilt-like effect. This bronze is called Girl with Tights. The 14-inch high sculpture is the work of Norman Holen, professor of art at Augsburg College. The work is one of a series of balanced figures wearing thin garments, a device that helps describe the contours of the figure. Megan Quinn created this wood-fired ceramics piece. The 31-inch tall pot grows from a smaller base and climaxes in a larger form. The teacher at Augustana College, Rock Island, leaves wheel marks on the form, giving the piece a dynamic vigor. Susan McGilvery of Midland Lutheran College, Fremont, Nebraska, created this 23-inch high earthenware vase. McGilvery calls the piece Amphora for Jackson's Action and Al's Decals. The vase is balanced precariously on a ceramic table that plays with the relationship between two and three dimensions. This 20-inch high sculpture is titled Unintended Theological Statement. It was created by Daryl Nelson of Augustana College, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The intricate wood construction uses a variety of media in precarious balance. The overall feeling is that of a kinetic or moving sculpture rather than a static sculpture. We hope you enjoyed this gallery tour of the exhibit by faculty artists of Lutheran colleges and universities. It is an event we would like to see repeated many times in the future. Thank you.